here near Mount Rainier National Park, just to the south in Lewis County, just pulled off to the side of a snowy road, kind of an unmaintained forest service road. I've got a four-wheel drive vehicle so I can go a little ways in the winter on unmaintained roads. I have chains just in case I need them. Um, I found a really pretty spot here on the river. I'm going to walk around this area a little bit and try to find a, a view that I really like and uh, get set up and do an old painting. Thanks for joining me. That is a really pretty scene right there. It's got some depth. It's got a nice view of the river. Should be pretty consistent light for most of the day. I do like how there's different trees in the distance there. Some deciduous trees with a little bit of new growth coming out. You can see that kind of orange, lavender color popping out on the tops of those trees. And then you've got the pine trees with lots of different shades of green. I'm going to walk a little bit more, but I may come back for this. There's a lot of snow on the ground, and in some places under the trees there's some deep soft wells, but otherwise I'm getting by just fine with my crampons. I don't need my snowshoes. There's kind of a hard crust on top of the snow that I'm walking on without sinking in too deep. This scene is just beautiful light snow here under the trees, a little bit of dappled light. So pretty. So pretty. There's endless scenes to paint. can't find something to paint here then there's something wrong with me. It's beautiful. Well, I came back to that spot. I really like it. So I'm going to sit up here and paint. Let me show you the scene. I'm going to paint this view down the river. There's a nice wide spot to set up. Got room to back up and look at the panel from a distance like I like. There are some snow-capped peaks in the background that I could borrow, possibly. I'm thinking about borrowing this pretty little peak and placing it in the scene somehow. We'll see. What I really like is this area here. I like how it's partially in shadow and how some of the rocks are really bright color. Um, I'm not sure if it's coming out in the video, but some of those rocks are reds and oranges. Really pretty. And then off in the distance, that river has a nice blue sheen from the really blue, clear blue sky today. It's a lovely day here, early March. 
we've got a lot of snow on the ground, but the temperature's mild. It's just above freezing. So I'm going with a little bigger panel today. I'm going with a going with a 12 by 16 today since I have a nice place and I'm pretty close to the truck so I don't have a long hike to get back. I got this new masterpiece larger panel carrier carrier. It takes up to a 16 by 20. I have a 16 by 20 there but I don't want to try that today. Um, but anything that has a 16 inch dimension then will fit and be held by that panel. It's kind of got a couple grooves so you can carry two panels. Two, you can carry two wet panels. It's masterpiece. It's wood. Pretty easy to use. I got it from Blick. Pretty inexpensive. So kind of excited this, to try a larger panel. As always, thanks for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Got a quick charcoal sketch in. As you know if you watch these videos, I like to put in one-third lines on my panel to help me with the composition. I like to try to put important horizons on one of the one-third lines. So I've got the far bank of this kind of river valley on this one-third line, the upper one-third line. And then on this lower one-third line, I've got this really beautiful clump of rocks here roughly situated right on that one third point I mod so I kind of squished the scene a little bit it wasn't quite working um, so I, I modified it a little bit to make that line up and then I also brought this hill down I'm not going to fit the snow capped mountains in there's just no room for all that but I can get a little bit of that beautiful cerulean blue sky here in this corner above that above that forested hill and then I've got some banks of these deciduous trees and then some more brighter more orange pine trees here and then the river coming down in here uh, I want to keep that river really flat so I want to concentrate as I'm painting here that as it comes forward I want to keep it very flat looking but then I want to pick out some of these beautiful colors under the, the rocks and the snow. It's a really beautiful scene. Should be fun to paint. I'll start with the turpentine wash, which is just taking some oil paint and diluting it with our artist turpentine. I just want to scrub in the scene. I want to capture the tones. So definitely cerulean blue for that sky. I'll just kind of lightly put that in. And then I think cad yellow lemon for the forested hill in the far background. And then a lizard and crimson for those deciduous trees. For the rocks in the distance, I think I'll use a lizard and crimson as well. For the river, I'll go with a burnt umber with some alizarin crimson and then the rocks in the foreground maybe a mix of burnt sienna and cadmium orange so I'm not going to be too careful I just want to get the harmony the color harmony down on the panel and then I'll take a brush with a little bit of turpentine and wipe away the lightest lights that'll help me set the value pattern and kind of solidify the composition as I'm scrubbing in the turpentine, I also scrub out the charcoal drawing.
Rain clouds and nightmares and twinkling snow. Hell no, I'm not coming back. Hell no, I'm not coming back. Well, I got the turpentine wash in and I wiped out the lightest lights. Got kind of a value pattern now. I'm just going to leave that wash I did for the sky with a cerulean blue. I'm going to leave it alone. That's close enough to the sky color. I'm going to start mixing up some paints now for that background hill of trees. I'll go with a really grayed out green for the pine trees and a couple different shades. One cooler and a little darker for the shadows. One a little warmer and lighter where the light is hitting it. And then as the trees move forward in the scene, they get a little warmer. There's some burnt sienna notes in the pine trees as they get a little closer to the river. And uh, the closest pine trees, the little ones right by the riverbank, have kind of a nice cadmium orange. But it's all going to be very subtle, very grayed out. After that, I'll paint the grays of those deciduous trees, which are basically If I squint at it and simplify it, it's, it's really two shades. There's a very slightly cool gray, maybe some cobalt blue in the gray as kind of a background color, and then a warmer gray, just a hint of cad red and a lizard crimson into a, a very light gray, a slightly warmer gray especially at the tops of the trees where the new leaves are coming out. John Singer Sargent is one of my art heroes. His paintings have this loose but accurate quality that many artists love. Um, if I could paint like someone, I would want to paint like him. I learned recently that his oil painting methodology is, is similar to mine, which I've been adapting over the years. I'm kind of self-taught, but I've also read a lot. I picked up a Alaprima method from Richard Smid recently from his great book, Alaprima II, um, where he starts with his turpentine wash, and I've been using that for uh, almost two years now, and I really enjoy it. Well, Sargent did the same. He went in to begin with with charcoal and did a quick sketch and then did a quick wash to set the tone and then he went to the middle values and then worked darker and lighter from those middle values so I'm gonna try that on this painting normally I would after the turpentine wash I would work from darkest value to light um, I'm gonna try this method that Sargent used which is right after the turpentine wash go in with the middle values and then work both dark and light from there and just see where it leads me. update on the day tripper. I really enjoy it. it. Seems like it's high quality. It's uh, really easy to use. So, so far so good. Okay, I've got the background hill in. It's all very gray. It's almost two, I think it's probably two, maybe three values trying to keep it all at the upper end of the scale to really push it back in the distance. I'm trying to keep it really gray and, and a little bit on the blue side. Now I'll move forward and mix up the colors for the snow. The snow in the scene out there looks uniformly bright, but to create that illusion of depth, I'm going to 
gray out the snow in the distance and make the snow closer to me more intense. And I'll do that by adding just a little bit of cad yellow or cad yellow lemon to the snow. Just a hint of it in almost pure white as it gets closer to me. For the river, I'll go with a, a grayed out cobalt blue in the distance and as it gets closer it's going to be a, a pretty dark green and a pretty dark burnt sienna. And then for the rocks it's all kind of a light gray with hints of cad yellow and hints of ultramarine blue. I just need to keep it really simple. I'm not trying to paint every rock. I'm not trying to paint every tree. I don't have the time while I'm out here. So I just want to go quickly and put in the, the big pieces and I can refine it when I get back to the studio. Beautiful location. Really enjoyed it here. Really glad I came. It was chilly toward the end. My hands were getting cold, but just a beautiful day. Let me show you what I ended up with. Maybe you can see the lighting stayed pretty consistent while I was here. Kind of stayed behind the shadows of those trees, and the sun stayed kind of low in the south. Here's the painting. It's really strongly backlit, so let me see if I can get this to show up. Here's the end result. I do like it. I think there's a nice composition there. I like this new method, the sergeant method of going in with the mid values first. I thought that worked pretty well. It actually helped me to keep my edges softer, especially in that background mountain. I'll take it back to the studio. I may lighten this background just a little bit. It's hard to tell. It, the shade's getting a little deeper and the backlight's getting stronger. That direction is pretty much west, maybe a little northwest. As the sun is traveling that direction to the west, the backlight is getting stronger, so it's getting a little harder to judge colors but really good day really enjoyed it feel like I learned a lot today there's some things I really like about the composition I do like the effect of the sh water shadow on the water here and sunlight on the water there and how it's picking up the both the reflection of the blue sky and the greens and browns of the of the river so I think that's pretty effective. Some things that bug me, I think this is a little too straight. Needs a little more, maybe, variation there. And I think that background is just a little too simple. It needs a little more detail, but not much more. But really good day. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it as well. 
If you do, please like and subscribe, share it with your friends. It really encourages me to make more of these. If you'd like to see extended videos, less time lapse, more real time brush work, more commentary, hop over to my Patreon page. The link is in the description of the video here on YouTube. Well, thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you on the trail.